In this video, I'm going to go over the screenshot assertion with Census Studio unit testing. First, we'll go to the guide. I'll talk about how I created the test, how I set up the properties for the archive server, start the archive server, run the command that persists the data to the archive server, runs the tests, and then how I configure the archive server for viewing the failures and successes in Census Studio. So let's get started by going to the the guide to start with. I won't cover all the details in this guide, but it shows how to run the commands, how to set up the archive server, and all the other data that you might find useful in running your Census Studio test in different environments. So I'm going to go to Census Studio. In the Census Studio, I'll just cover this high-level overview of how I created a I created a scenario, and then a Jasmine suite. In this Jasmine suite. I have one unit test. And this test, it will load up the Google page, type in Sencha, wait a second, and then persist the screenshot with the name Google search page. So let's run this test just for a quick test and verify that it's working. So I'm gonna go to the scenario, select Chrome, select the test suite, then hit run. So I'm gonna minimize this because I wanna see if I can see it running. It should happen real quick. Okay, so it's gone to Google types in Sencha and finishes. And let's just maximize this again. Okay, so you can see that the test suite ran successfully with the green check boxes. So now the next step is I wanna set up to persist this data. I won't persist unless I have the archive server set up. So let's get, get to the command prompt. But before we do that, before we can run the server, we need to storage.json, the properties for the for the second command to run. So let's go to the file manager. We're gonna look at where I have the folder where I'm gonna run the server. And then in this storage, let's just look at that. I'm gonna open up Xcode because it's in white. So in here I have an arbitrary key, the secret key that just points to this bucket or it'll be a subdirectory within the relative path of this server. So now that I have the storage.json set up, I'm gonna to go to the command prompt and start the server. And you'll see that it creates the, the storage server and the bucket that has the, the information for running the server. The next step is I'm gonna to go to the project directory where I'm gonna run, go into the first scenario. And in that, I'm gonna run the embedded server, the embedded unit tests with the bucket name and when it runs it will run the command persist the screenshot and the first one that it runs it will be a valid screenshot and the next one will compare against that first one as the baseline so you can see that it passed so let's say i'll pretend that google failed and the unit tests i'm going to go change the unit test instead of having google fail i'll make it i'll fake it by just changing the, the assertion to, that I want it. So let's go back to the command prompt or terminal and we'll run it again. So this time the test will compare the screenshot to the baseline of the first test. There it goes, it types it in, T this time, and it's gonna be different than the first screenshot and you can see that it failed. Okay, so now that I have a failure for a test, I want to view it in Sensor Studio, but we've got to set it up. So we'll go to the archive server settings, set it up. So I know it's on HTTP localhost, and then port 1903, and then I did test storage as the directory. So there's no alerts down here, so I know I've set it up correctly. It will show you the alert if not. So let's look at it. Okay, it created a simple key for the first test that I ran, persisted the data. You can see the checkboxes are, are green. The second one over here, it shows one failure. Let's just expand this tree and go back down to the unit test that failed. We'll click on the X and then we'll click on the expected test. And you can see, or click on the screenshot that failed. And you can see it can, the comparison where it failed, what was different. And the error rate this time was 9.03%. So I won't talk about the features of how you, how you look at this viewer and, in this video, but I just wanted to show that you can quickly look at the comparison of the screenshots. So that concludes this video for today. Thanks for watching.